You've talked about structures, you've looked at a number of different ones, you've talked about strength and stability, started looking at compression and tension, the role that they play, and the shapes within structures. Now it's time to have your students build one of their very own. So what design are you going to use? What kind of structure are you going to build? You can go for the bridge, the tower, you can build a crane, maybe an overhang. There's a number of different options available to you. Also, different materials available to you as well. You can go for popsicle sticks, straws, toothpicks, clay. How are you going to adhere those materials together? Maybe use tape, glue. Uh, you could also use clay to do that. I've even seen people use dried peas as well. We're going to talk about those uh, different materials and designs that I think are easiest in the classroom and hopefully that will help you when you're deciding on what you want to do with yours. Alright, so let's build a bridge. Now what materials are we going to use? I quite like popsicle sticks, white glue, uh, straws and tape. You can use them separately or even all together if you wish. And you want to make that clear at the very beginning with your expectations. How are you going to build this bridge? How, what's your span going to be? I have a 30 centimeter span between some books here. You can use tables, chairs. How are you going to test your bridge at the end? What is the purpose and goal of this bridge? Because that will likely affect the design and you'll want to talk about that with your students. Now, how much material are they going to be permitted to use? Now, on my bridge I have 25 popsicle sticks, but another useful way to do uh, this particular activity is to give a certain amount of money to each of your teams, your students, and they can purchase the materials after you've assigned value to each. Uh, so maybe a popsicle stick might be worth $100, a certain amount of glue and tape might be worth uh, a certain amount uh, of money as well. And that will get them to think about how much material they need for their design. And that will affect the design quite a bit as well. This is a good collaborative activity uh, for partners, groups of three, maybe four. You can assign different roles to your students, such as contractors, designers, material experts, and you can swap those roles as they're doing the activities. When they start the activity, you really want to focus on the design and the plan. So in their groups, they might design and draw their plan first and foremost, and maybe have it peer reviewed by other teams before they start building. Or they could run it by you, city planner, uh, as the teacher, and you could sign off before they start building as well. And when they start building, it's going to be very exciting. They're going to jump right into it, and that'll be uh, neat to see. You can circulate and ask them questions about how their thought process has evolved uh, in this particular project. Now, at the end, you're going to be doing some reflecting and discussing, which is really key. You're going to ask them uh, what shapes they've used and why in particular bridges within different teams. Uh, how money, material, and time has affected the design of their bridge. They can make predictions as to how that's affected the strength of their bridge as well. And you can also ask them what are, uh, is crucial information for an engineer to know before uh, they start designing and building a bridge in real life. Hopefully these questions will help you out with this activity. The bridges are built and now it's time for your students to test them. Are they going to test them by setting weight on top of the bridge or might they hang some from the bottom? This is something you would have likely covered in the objectives before designing the bridge. Your students may design their bridges around this particular purpose and so it's important for them to know how their bridges are going to be tested ahead of time. Now, once you start uh, this activity, your students are going to make predictions as to where they feel their bridge is weakest and where they feel it will collapse. They're going to record this. And once the activity is underway and they're testing uh, their bridges, you can ask them what forces uh, is their bridge having to withstand? And they can map that out for you as they're setting mass uh, on their bridge and testing them. Uh, afterwards, when they fail, this is going to lead to some interesting questions. They're going to make some key observations as to what happened, make note of where it failed, and uh, also they can talk about the materials used in their bridge, the designs, uh, and how they might change their bridge if they were to do it over again. So they might walk around the class and see what happened to everybody else's bridge and this will give them a good idea about their design and the materials and a better understanding uh, of, uh, of how bridges work and structures in general. You can also gauge how students interpret their test results from this as well. Similar to the bridge building activity, you can also use towers to look at how forces act on and within structures. In this case, the objective of my structure was to support the weight of a full can of pop. 
And so far, it seems to be meeting that objective. Now, in this activity, I chose to use and limit myself uh, at 50 different straws here, which I've used to build this particular tower. Now, I've put it together with tape, uh, and in the planning phase of this activity, specifically if you have your students in groups, they're going to want to decide how they're going to put their tower together and connect their straws. They could maybe use paper clips as well if you put those at, out at their disposal uh, too. Will they use their straws at full length or will they want to cut and alter their straws in their design? How are they going to distribute the weight of the objective, in this case a can of pop? So they're going to build their structures, and before they test them though, maybe this is a good opportunity to have your students present to the class uh, the strategy that they used when designing and building their structure. Why did they use that strategy? How did they connect their straws together? And do they feel that they're going to be able to meet the objective of supporting the mass that you've set out for them? You're going to have the students test their towers, and after that, talk about the similarities between those towers that were successful in this objective and the differences between that though of the towers that were successful and those that weren't. Uh, talk about alterations that they might make to, uh, to their tower if they were to do this activity again and the lessons they've learned in this particular experiment. Uh, also relate to real towers out there, the existing ones and the materials that are used in those towers, the purposes of these towers, the external forces they have to uh, support uh, the weight, uh, maybe even the wind that uh, interacts with towers of that height as well. Another neat activity you can try with your students when talking about forces acting on structures and within them is to build an overhang off of the side of a chair or a table. And when you build this, you can see how far out you could go before it collapses, or you could use a prescribed number of straws, in this case, like I've used, and uh, put some weights at the end of it to see how much it'll support. Now, I've used a styrofoam cup and a paper clip here. By putting pennies in this cup, we'll see how much it'll withstand. This is a good example of tension at the top as we see that beam bending across and stretching, and compression here as we're squeezing down on this supporting beam at the bottom. external forces act on structures and some of these result from natural phenomena such as heavy rainfalls, snowfalls or heavy winds or specific events such as tornadoes and earthquakes, hurricanes and that's uh, an item within the specific expectations of the curriculum document and so that's why we want to look at the impact of these forces and events on structures and different designs and materials used to try to withstand some of those forces. Now some of the structures that you may have built, you may be able to uh, check out how these structures withstand some of those forces by simulating wind with a fan, or maybe a sheet of cardboard or the top of a Tupperware container where you can create some wind or give the table a good shake for an earthquake. Now you can also use some media in your classroom by looking at different videos and images and that will really showcase uh, and give your students a good idea of the impact of some of these forces on different structures. We've had some fun looking at different activities that cover forces acting on structures and mechanisms. We looked at tension and compression, designing and building activities, uh, natural forces and how they impact uh, different structures as well. Uh, also some other good resources that you might want to take a look at when designing this unit are PBS.org, the Ontario Science Centre and the Exploratorium. They have some good online resources that might be of some use to you as well. <music>